This is AP Precalculus Notes for Topic 3.9, Inverse Trigonometric Functions. Let's go backwards today. So, in the past, we've gone forwards using sine, cosine, and tangent, and today we're going backwards with all three of those. So, the way that we do that is you're looking for this button on your calculator. It is known as the arc sign. You can also spell it out arc sign as a note if you're using a Desmos scientific calculator or a Desmos graphing calculator. You can literally type in the letters A R C S I N and it will behave the same way as this button would. So, if you're fast at typing, that's the one that you would use. So, the way that we pronounce this is arc sign of x. So we say arc sign of x. Arc sign of x. So, let's see how we use that. Let's pretend that we want to undo this sign right here. So, I don't have enough room. So, I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this. I'm going say that if I originally had sine of pi over 6, and that's equal to 1 half, I'm going to give some room here, and I'm going to undo sine by taking the arc sine of that side. So I say arc sine of the left-hand side, and anything that I do to the left, I also have to do to the right to preserve the equal, the equality, right, the, the balance. So I say sine uh, to the power of negative 1, so arc sine of that side. Whenever I have arc sine of sine, these are inverse functions, just the same thing as x squared and the square root would cancel each other out. Arc sine and sine will also cancel each other out. So I will cross both those off, leaving behind a pi over 6. What do we have on the right-hand side? We have arc sine of this 1 half. This means that if I give you a problem, arc sine of 1 half, you need to now tell me that's pi over 6. So it's a whole new batch of things to memorize. So there's a problem, though. And the problem is, when I say arc sine of 1 half, this is really asking the question of, when I have a unit circle, let's go ahead and draw that unit circle so you can visualize that, right? If I have a unit circle, and I tell you arc sine, meaning the, the y coordinate, the y coordinate is 1 half. Let me go ahead and show you where y coordinate of 1 half is. It's right about there. Where do I have a y coordinate of 1 half? And you say, ah, yes, right here, which is pi over 6. And you would be correct. But notice that there's another intersection over here, which is technically 5 pi over 6. And technically, there's an infinite number of answers because while this answer is good, you can rotate around uh, 360 degrees or another 2 pi radians and get another angle, rotate again, and you get another angle. So there's an infinite number of answers that give you a height or a y coordinate of 1 half. So we need to restrict the domain. And that's why we're going to talk about this right now. So in theory, if you have an inverse function, you, you might know this. In order to be invertible, you must pass what's known as the horizontal line test. That means if I draw a horizontal line anywhere on this graph, it can only pass through the line once, at most once. And notice that it's hitting multiple times, which means this function is not invertible. The way that you fix that is you cut this into pieces that are invertible. So for example, if I had cut this piece and this piece right here, that would be bad because I'm still hitting two times. So we cut at pi over two and negative pi over two. So we only touch once no matter where I draw a horizontal line. So the natural domain restriction for a sine function is between negative pi over two and pi over two. That will always give you what is known as the principal value. And I'll write that down because I don't think it's in Brian's notes, but this is known as a principal value. The principal value is the angle that is in the natural domain restriction of that trig function. So the natural uh, trig function's domain restriction for sine is between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. Therefore, when we invert 1 half, we are talking about in between negative pi over 2 to pi over 2, which is pi over 2 is here, negative pi over 2 is technically back this direction, and it's everything over here on the right-hand side, meaning this is an answer and this one over here is not an answer in terms of its, of its principal value. So we've restricted it correctly, and I don't want to even look at the answer down here. Let me ask the question to make sure that your brains are working here. If I give you a cosine function, let's go ahead and draw a quick little sketch of a cosine function. Cosine function looks kind of like that, right? Um, and maybe I should draw it a little bit smaller. That way we can see that it goes on and on forever and ever. It goes like this and forever that direction too. Where should we cut um, the... The, the function, we cut it so many different spots in order to make sure that we are invertible. So for example, if we do the same domain restriction between here and here, we don't have any, um, we don't pass the horizontal line test. So hopefully you're looking at this and saying, okay, well, we kind of want to 
cut it between a, a minimum and a maximum. So we could cut it like maybe cut it like there and there. That might work. Uh, maybe we could cut it there and there. That would also work. There and there would also work. There's an infinite number of answers that work. The one that makes the most sense is cutting it here and here because we're going in the positive direction. I mean, you could theoretically go in the negative direction and cut it here and here, but we, we're going to go with the positive direction and say that's our domain restriction for cosine. I'm going to go ahead and erase that just to make sure that you're thinking. So check it out. That is, in fact, the domain restriction for cosine. We cut it between zero and pi. Notice that the domain restriction for both sine and cosine is half of the period. The period for sine goes here and then here. So the entire period here is two pi. And then if we do our domain restriction, the, um, we have like two of these blocks as opposed to one, two, three, four of these blocks. We have half of the period. Same thing down here. Half of the period will give us um, our domain restriction, making sure that we pass the horizontal line test everywhere that we have this bold line. So we're remembering where this looks like on a graph. I don't think it's super important to know where it is on this graph. It's really important to know where it is on unit circle, which we'll talk about in just a second. All right, and then the next question is for tangent. I believe tangent is coming up. Oh, I just showed the answer there. Don't look at that. What happens if I have a tangent function? You'll remember that a tangent function has this uh, behavior that goes like this, and then it repeats, and then it repeats, and then it repeats over here as well. And then we have these uh, vertical tangents here, here, and here, and here. Uh, hopefully you remember those vertical tangents are negative pi over 2 to pi over 2 to 3 pi. Oh, I think it goes to pi next, doesn't it? Yeah, it goes uh, to, well, another pi would be 3 pi over 2, isn't it? Yeah, there we go. So all of those are our horizontal, sorry, vertical tangents. Can't use the words correctly. Um, so where should we have our domain restriction? It just makes sense to have the domain restriction where you have your uh, vertical tangents. So our domain restriction for tangent is it going to be between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2, and that's what we have for our domain restrictions for tangent as well. Again, I'm going to go ahead and erase this. I just wanted to visualize what that process was, and you see that. Okay, so let's memorize where these values are, because we're about to do this on a unit circle. So between negative pi over 2 to pi over 2 for sine, if I come to the next page, sine, the domain restriction is between negative pi over 2 to pi over 2, like I just said, which means negative pi over 2 goes clockwise this direction and pi over 2 goes counterclockwise this direction. Everything on the right-hand side is a possible value for our arc sine. So if you suddenly think, oh, well, the answer over here is going to actually be something like, I don't know, 5 pi over 6, you would be wrong. It's actually going to be this value over here of pi over 6. This value we do not use. And in fact, in your notes, please cross off this section. We are not going to be using the left-hand side of sine. We're only using that right-hand side of sine. Same thing for cosine. Because the natural domain restriction is between 0 and pi, 0 is here. Pi is all the way over here. So it's everything on the top for cosine. So uh, the positive values of, of y, I suppose. You can say everything on the top is good, everything on the bottom is bad. And tangent, again, the domain restriction, we restrict that where the vertical asymptotes are, therefore everything on the right. So nothing on the left, only the things on the right. Everything that is shaded is good in this case. So hopefully you have that memorized because we're going to go ahead and try some example problems. So arc cosine of this negative root 2 over 2. The way that I do each of these problems is I first draw my unit circle. Uh, there's my coordinate plane. I say, okay, uh, if I'm talking about cosine, cosine is talking about the x coordinate. So how much, how much left and right am I going? Well, I'm going left because I'm going a negative amount, this medium amount. Again, I always think of square root of 2 as a medium, square root of 3 over 2 as large, and 1 half as small. So I'm going left a medium amount. If I go left a medium amount, that means I'm going left right about uh, here. That's a medium amount, which means I have these two points as possible values. So uh, we, we know also for the domain restriction that cosine has to live over here in the, the top. So I have to choose the top value for my domain restriction, which means the answer is going to be this one right here. And hopefully you have your radians memorized. If not, go study your blue kit, go study your flash guide some more. This one is 3 pi over 4. And that is indeed the answer. We'll come back over here and say 3 pi over 4. All right, let's try another one. Arc sine. So again, I'm going to draw out my unit circle, draw my coordinate plane, and say, okay, sine is talking about the y coordinate, the, the heights of my function, right? So I'm going to go down because I have a negative value, and I'm going to go down a large amount. So if I go down a large amount, that means I'm going down right about, okay, my circle's not very good, but like right about there. So I could have that point or that point. So I know for sine, arc sine, I have my natural domain restriction of going on the right-hand side of my unit circle. So I choose the one that's on the right side of my unit circle, which means the correct answer is this one that goes down like this. And hopefully you have that value memorized. On the speed sheet that I've been giving you guys, I've been saying that this value is 5 pi over 3. And that's I mean, you're, you're correct that that is the correct location. But remember, 5 pi over 3 means we're rotating 
all the way here, all the way here, all the way here, and then all the way here. This is a gigantic rotation. We're not going to be doing a rotation all the way through the space. We're going to be going backwards just a tiny amount. That's what I'm really after. So this value down here is not, I mean, it is 5 pi over 3, but the one that we're looking for is just a negative pi over 3, which you'll notice is in the domain restriction for our sine function. Our sine function is allowed to go backwards and forwards this time. So we went backwards, not the full pi over 2, just pi over 3, almost all the way. So I'm going to come over here and say this one is a negative pi over 3. And then finally, let's do an arctangent problem. Okay, so again, unit circle and use our uh, coordinate plane. So square root of 3 is what I consider to be a large value. 1 is a medium value. And 1 over the square root of 3, a.k.a. the square root of 3 over 3, is a small value. So we have a large value here, a large slope, if you will. So that means if I have a large slope, I have a slope that's going like this. There's our slope. And you'll notice that this intersects here and intersects down here. And we happen to know that tangent, um, I'm only talking about the right-hand side. So I'm going to choose the right-hand side, which means I'm going to be talking about this point right here. And that point is pi over 3. And I don't know why I'm writing it there. I should have written it up here. Pi over 3, ooh, that was a terrible 3, is the final answer. All right. So let's try a slightly harder question now. Um, example 3. Um, we have all of these values, and I'm trying to find, okay, the arc cosine of x. Well, x is normally up here. It's, it's positive, and arc cosine means I'm asking, what is the angle that gives me this spot right here? Well, that angle here is p, I guess. We can just say that that's point p. Okay, what about negative y? Well, arc sine, I know that arc sine is somewhere on the right-hand side, and negative y means I'm going down here, so the correct answer is s. All right, arc cosine of negative x. Okay, here's x. Negative x is going to be on the other side. And I know that cosine is somewhere up here, so the only point that I can have is q. And you might think, ah, process of elimination. We've used p, we've used p, we've used s, we've used s, we've used q, we've used q. The next one has to be r. You'd be wrong. You can reuse letters. Okay, so arc tangent of negative slope. I'm only seeing a negative slope. The fact that it's y over x is just the definition of tangent, just like x is the definition of cosine and y is the definition of sine. So this is the definition of tangent, and I want a negative slope. So if I want a negative slope, I have a negative slope that goes like this. I can choose either of these two points, and I have arc tangents. Uh, natural domain restriction is over here on the right-hand side, so the principal value will give us another s. And I believe that's all for topic. Yep, then it goes to worksheet A. So that does conclude our notes for topic 3.9. There's the second page. There's the first page. Thanks for watching.